Hey guys, welcome to Respiratory 3260 lab videos. Um, at this time, I'm going to set up the jet ventilator, the Benel jet ventilator, show you guys the bits and pieces. Um, I am making a separate video for theory, so I'm not going to go majorly into theory on this video, but I will go into the mechanics and the nuts and bolts of the ventilator. So first things first, the bottom vent here is the Benel jet ventilator. It is a type of high frequency ventilation that uses a passive exhalation. This it makes it um, a great vent for situations such as air leaks, um, gentle ventilation, PIE, um, and secretion mobilization issues. One thing with the Benel ventilator is that it does not have a mean airway pressure or a PEEP. It will read the mean, but it does not have a baseline pressure for maintenance of alveolar recruitment. That's why we have the Draeger ventilator that hooks into it. So essentially you're running two ventilators at the same time. So I'm gonna show you the nuts and bolts and we're gonna set it up. So starting we have our suction, inline Ballard suction catheter is a little bit different. We have three ports. Um, four ports, excuse me, here on one side and then the major one here where our suction goes through. So with that, we ha also have this piece called the life port adapter. If you hear everyone, anyone call it a life port adapter. This one is determinant of your patient's tube size. So for example, the baby I'm setting this up for has a 2.5 millimeter endotracheal tube. So I read on the package of the life port adapter 2.5 millimeters. Um, in your suction kit, if we're setting this up without any type of nitric or any type of bleed in, you will need these two adapters to stick into your suction catheter to prevent a leak. And then you'll have these three major holes where we'll apply adapters. On top of that, we have water. We use water feed through through both the jet ventilator and also the Draeger, where you also need a line to feed it. Last thing I wanna show you is the box for the flow interrupter. This is how we deliver the high frequency. So essentially we're giving a continuous flow and we're interrupting that flow in order to give that high frequency. And you can see, it's a little hard to see. Um, we have our flow continues from here, from the humidifier to the patient. And this button allows you to feed through um, the device that does high frequency. Um, over here on the back is called the purge, which I will show you guys when we set it up, how that goes into play. And then we have where we actually, another um, gas feed to our patient. So right now that's just kind of a lot of nuts and bolts. I just wanted to show you everything up close. We are going to now set up the jet ventilator. So as with any ventilator uh, for mechanical ventilation, we have to have um, pneumatic and electronic feeds. So you'll need to plug in both the jet and the Draeger electronically and also both the jet and the Draeger pneumatically. So you can have a lot, you need four adapters two oxygen, two air, an air, and an oxygen for each ventilator. I just went ahead and did that so that we don't have to focus on that. After that, the way I think is easiest to set up the jet is to move from the cartridge out. So move from my equipment, the base of my equipment, out. So in here we have a little cartridge that helps with our water feed and that can come in and out. It clips in, it looks like a little cassette tape for those of you that are not super young millennials. Feeds right in and then you push it in, clip down so that it's securely in there. This is the part I struggle with the most on the consistent basis. After that, it's just a lot of plugging and placing. 
So this little line goes to our purge line so that we can purge additional pressure. We are already having continuous gas flow. So this is our line coming out up to here where we have our flow interrupter, our purge line that we are connecting for the patient and the vent. Additional tubing. If you do hook in um, inhaled nitric oxide, this is where you'll put the patient read port. You'll cut it and put an adapter in. And then this hooks up to our live port adapter. So moving from the cartridge out, this is when our little box comes into play. How I remember which way it goes is this is my circuit, this clear line, this is my patient, or the other way is basically it's just connecting the dots. So we can apply this to our purge line. Ooh, look, it fits. How oh, nice. And then our interrupter will sneak under here. We'll push the button and sneak it in like that. After that, you can set this aside. There is a tray that will go at the head of the bed. I personally like to put a burp cloth or a diaper down and then I put this in on top of that so that it is secure to the bed if for some reason you have to move the ventilator for whatever reason, fit other equipment or anything, it's going to stay connected to the bed and this potentially won't fall off the side and extricate your baby, which we don't want. Okay, so that's one way we move from the circuit out. The other is we have this green tubing here that's connected to our cartridge. It connects to the gas out on here. And I'll make sure to put some good close up pictures in our theory so that you guys can see this up close. Okay, so our gas out. Also, this gas outlet is where you will put the analyzer, the little um, injector line cartridge for inhaled nitric oxide. This is where you will apply it for the jet ventilator. Okay, after that, again, moving from the cartridge out, the last piece that we haven't used is this water line pump. This is the water pump. You will attach your IV tubing it's just normal IV tubing, nothing fancy. Take your cap off. Attach it in line and twist. After that, you will take a bag of water and spike it. One thing you guys can relax a little bit about is with nursing, they ha don't have they have to worry about bubbles in their IV tubing. But since we all just blow hot air, you don't have to worry about air in your tubing because that's what we do. After that, this just goes on the bottom of your cart, lays flat. You bring the water line over, pinch it in your water pump, and close it up. This part is a little tricky, guys. Close it in your water pump. Here. It'll be a pretty hard click. That's where you'll feed it to. That way it will feed the water in through the cartridge so that we can uh, do our hydro. Okay. Our cartridge is in and all set up and ready to go. Next we will move to the dragger. So we'll turn our dragger on. At this time, we're gonna leave the flow sensor in. And that is because we have to do a circuit check. <laughs> we have to do a circuit check um, and analyze our flow sensor, but we will be placing the ventilator into a non-invasive mode so, um, to give our PEEP so that we can find the average mean pressure. With mean pressure, we want to try to achieve a mean pressure that is typically matching or a little bit higher 
than on the conventional ventilator. Um, and that you will read. So you'll go just about one or two lower on your PEEP so that you can maintain the same, if not a slightly higher mean airway pressure. So we're gonna do our circuit test. We have the new neonate. Remember with the Draeger, it's press, turn, select. System check, device check, breathing circuit check. Stars. Sorry, I know you guys have done this before in lab, and I'm so sorry you have to go through it again in this video, but it's something you will do many times. So essentially you're just trying to deliver one continuous pressure. You can put it into a NIPV mode where you can deliver a small amount of breaths. Typically it'll be between one to five per minute, and that is to do a recruitment breath or a side breath. For this purpose and the patient we're setting this jet up for, we're going to leave it on just one continuous pressure for our PEEP um, and not give what some will term a backup breath because it's not needed at this time. Sorry, you guys have to watch me do a circuit check. They do take forever. So we'll talk a couple other considerations about the jet while this goes through. Um, because of the passive exhalation, you can administer surfactant via PPV and then place the baby on the jet, but you can't give um, surfactant and use it to instill into the lungs, such as you can with an oscillator because of that passive exhalation. It helps get air and pressure below the obstructions and move it up and out. That's why it's indicated for meconium aspiration. But the jet would just take all the surfactant and bring it up and out of the lungs. Okay, breathing circuit check is finished. So we come to tube and NIV. We wanna make sure we are in a non-invasive mode of ventilation. Otherwise, it's not going to work for us. Take your flow sensor, take it out of line. and then secure it in a clean situation in case you decide to move to conventional ventilation on this Draeger later on, that your flow sensor will stay clean since you're putting it in line. Go to start standby, settings. We are gonna be in a CPAP. I don't really like to go below seven or eight on my PEEP. I feel like you start de-recruiting after that. With this baby, we're going to go to a peep of eight. And then you can adjust your flow. You'll always want to make sure your drager is in a flow setting. And we can go up typically somewhere between five to ten range. Okay, this is kind of the more tricky part. Take your drager circuits, pop them out of your Y. Take this, store it away in a clean place with your flow sensor. You then, in your Draeger circuit packets, you'll come with a little baggie, like this, of adapters. In there, you will have two adapters that you'll place on the end of your circuit. Like that. Those pieces then attach in to your Ballard suction right here. Like that. And then this end with the big hole is where your life port adapter attaches to. This then is where end will then attach the end of the endotracheal tube. Okay, bring it back to our little box here that we put at the head of the bed. We then attach our pressure line to the end. There's a little metal adapter here. Attach it to the end. It also 
it's the pressure gauge line. So similar as with the BiPAP, the V60, um, how we have the pressure line, which reads the back pressures, this is where the reading comes from. That's what this pres in that pressure line is. On your life port adapter, there is a cap. You'll remove that cap, and that's where the gas insulation will clip into. Okay, we are there. We are set up on our jet ventilator. To test, you'll need the end of a glove to be your little lung. So we'll turn it on. I think it legit looks like Back to the Future when we set it up. It will alarm, let us know it's working. This test button over here, you never want to press when it is on a patient, but if you press it beforehand, it will run a test on your jet, make sure everything looks great. It will test the numbers on the screen. Basically, it's just our SST for a banal jet up here. Okay. Some other buttons we'll go over again in the theory, but just to show you everything with your silence buttons up here, best button in the world. You have enter and standby down here. So enter, standby. You can adjust your PIP. So you'll administer a PIP, a rate, and an eye time or on time. So you will adjust your PIP for this baby, we're going to go to 24. So you'll set it. Move over. We're going to give a rate of 420 and 0.02 eye time. After that, you'll press enter. And that will start your Benel jet. Before you put it on your baby, you're going to want to start your jet. And you're also going to want to start your Drager pull. You have to make sure both are on and running before... Okay, because I didn't have it plugged in, it's saying loss of PIP. So watch as I put this on, so that it reads. So we can test the ventilation before we put it on our baby by putting a glove over top to one how it ventilates to make sure it's functioning properly. Um, on top of that, let me switch hands here. So down here we have what we are giving. Up here is what we are getting back return volumes. So we have the PIP reading up top, the delta P, our change in pressure, so that difference, so that little mini tidal volume we're getting with each, that's what our change in pressure is. Our PEEP, which is what we're measuring for our PEEP from um, the Drager down to the patient. Our mean airway pressure, we're shooting for about a mean of 10 for this baby and we're at 10.2, so go us. And then our servo pressure. Typically, if you are around two on your servo pressure, and again, I will get into that more in our theory um, lecture, is typically a good place. This is some might call a driving pressure or the pressure needed to deliver that breath. Down here is the temperature given to the baby from the jet. And then as you can see up here, we can see the high frequency delivery. So let me So I guess a few other things, um, you'll need to pause the jet every time, sorry, every time you go to suction, you will pause the jet to make sure that you get the most amount of secretion out. Um, and with that, the alarms automatically set, so you'll have to reset the alarms. And you'll just do that is once it says ready on here. That means it's calibrated, it's gone back to the pressures it needs. Um, you will just, your alarm limits, you'll push what limit it is and push up or down to expand your alarms. 
So again, thanks so much guys. That is just the nuts and bolts. We'll get a little more into the theory and the function and physiology of it in our online lecture. So it's a lot less scary than it looks. I remember the first time I set up the jet, it was very intimidating, very scary. Once you break it down and take it piece by piece, it's one of the, my favorite pieces of equipment. So thanks guys, Bring, come to class with lots of questions. Um, shoot me questions if you have it, it'll be great. This is my favorite piece of equipment. This could be awesome. Okay, thanks guys.